How did you think your day was going to turn out? I was going to write the Africa Day article I was supposed to write. Okay. <laughs> did you start? The next moment, in my mind, I've started. The next moment, I'm in Osei Kwame's bedroom. Osei Kwame's studio? Studio, sorry. Hey, Osei Kwame's bedroom thing. <laughs> sounds, sounds. Yeah. Sounds, sounds. <laughs> Anyway, so um, we're going to begin the conversation. Can I hold something? I'm nervous. I want to hold something. You want to fidget? Yeah, 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 I feel like I'm going to fidget. Can you imagine? Let me just, let me not. Thankfully, it doesn't interfere with the sound. All right. So if you want to fidget, you can fidget with something. Okay. That's, but why are you nervous though? Believe it or not. In all the years that I've done journalism, this is my very first time in front of a camera. And because of this platform, and because of the kind of person I know you are, I know what kind of conversation may emerge from, from this. So I know that I may not be ready for it. Like, <laughs> okay. like I may be veering to places that I generally would not. But you still go. showed up. Yeah, man. I, it had to happen, you know. Okay. I'm grateful that you showed up, though. Um, for me, I've always been in, intrigued by the fact that there are, no, there are not so many uh, people in your space. <clears throat> but before we even get to your space, which will be discovered in a few seconds, who are you? Who, I mean, you write. So usually writers, you, you can barely put a face to. So who are yeah. you? If somebody is watching this right now and they've probably seen your work or read your work, who are they looking at now? I'm, I'm generally the guy beside the guy. In the sense that um, um, I tell other people's stories. So I, I get to witness people do great things. So I get to witness the guys and I, I tell stories about the guys. So I'm the guy beside the guy. So... You chronicle yes. these activities. Yeah. In, in, in pop culture, I would say um, there are superheroes and there are the folks that tell the stories yes. of the superheroes, yes. and you're yes. one of those people. Yeah. How, how did you get there? Um, of course, cliche, cliche background. Um, I've been writing since I was young enough to write, then blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So that's, that's, so, so that's, that's in my. I, my earliest memories of stuff like this, and I, I, I come from a very musical family. My parents both love music. My mom has been in the choir for as long as I can remember, and she and I remember her um, playing music in the house a lot. Same with my dad, um, and I remember her reading me or reading us, the children, um, um, bedtime stories. Some of these stories are still very vivid in my mind. So I do know that these two things that I, I merged, which is music and writing, I, remember, I do know that I, I traced them all the way back. To, to your childhood? To my childhood, in Mampubi and surrounding areas. It's, it's not common to have um, bedtime stories. What kind of childhood did you have? Regular childhood, Charlie. Regular childhood. Um, um, you think regular, bedtime stories is, is regular childhood? I, I, I don't know. Maybe I was privileged, or we were privileged, because our parents no matter how modest the, the household was, they, they, they emphasized certain things. So they emphasized reading and going to the library. And so they, they inculcated that culture into us at a very, very young age. And so when I grew old enough to realize that this is something I wanted to do, it wasn't so difficult because my mom, on Saturday, instead of letting us hang about the boys, she would send us to the, the library. You know, and I do, like I said, I remember her reading us bedtime stories and playing music in the house. She played a lot of music in the house. She would, sometimes she would record her own music because I, I imagine that when you sing so much, you end up creating your own music. So I do remember her recording some of her stuff, you know. So these are, these are memories from many, many years ago when I was six years, seven years, eight years. So music writing and you know being around why didn't you choose to be the singer or even a musician in writing terms mm. 
how course, did you how like, did you get to every every writer has visited or has played with the idea of of wanting to become a musician so i do know that in like on some days i wish i was a musician because music is so powerful and music is such a beautiful anybody who's able to create music essentially is doing the work of god and so i do know but i I have not been good at much else. I've not been good at uh, any other thing. I've only been good at writing. And I do know that I enjoy music. I'm privileged <clears throat> that in Ghana, I can do these things and get paid for it. I cannot count a lot of other people who get to do this and get to be paid for it and get to, you know, grow a reputation and, you know, all of that. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Gabriel Myers Hansen. We are going to have to retain that because I'm laughing. Why? It's fine. Your name is Gabriel Myers Yeah, nobody has... Hansen. You know, I laugh because my name means something now. And that's why saying it out loud makes me laugh because uh, I feel like my name is gradually becoming a title as well. And of course, usually I hear other people mention my name I don't mention my name. And so when I have to say my name out, it's funny. It gives me the jitters. And when Why? I get the jitters, I Is it, I is it some kind of uh, imposter syndrome? Uh, yeah. Because I've not... Perhaps you could put it that way because I... Then when you say my name, it almost feels like it's another person, you know? Because the whole... The number of expectations that come with saying that name, oh, he's the guy who writes, he's the guy who does the interviews, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so the name is the name. Okay, I understand. <clears throat> At what point did you um, start to realize that the name is the name? How long have you been doing this? Um, 2014, 2013. That's when you started? Yeah, that's when my some of my first articles started getting published properly. Of course, but before then, of course, on blogs and my Facebook page. But you know, the graphic, graphic Ghana web, um, except E News G H. This is 2014-ish. Do you remember your first article? Hmm. Do you remember how you were feeling about it being like? Being published click send <clears throat> live i mean i do remember of course in high school so i'd send in articles to the mirror because the mirror was still is my favorite newspaper and so i'd send articles and then whenever my articles would appear i i do know the feeling that i got and and how i would race to the newsstand to go get a copy of the newspaper you know, um, so I do remember that. And it's not so different from when I started publishing seriously, which is on NUGH. I do remember the very first, I think it was an article about Kofi Kenata. I'm not so sure. Either Kofi Kenata or Bisakede. But I don't know, those are some of the earliest um, articles I got published. And I do know that I was very, very happy because I was teaching in the, um, I'm not saying this story. No, I want to, I want to know. I'm not telling you this. So, um, I was teaching, nah, I, 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 today's not the day. Okay. Today's not the day. But, okay. um, yeah, <clears throat> 2014, 2014, and, and I was very, very happy. Like, every time my articles would show, or like a musician I admire would reach out to me and say, oh, I like your, I like how you wrote, or I like how you told my story. I know how it made me feel. And for a long time, even before I started getting money for what I was writing, I knew that those were some of the things that were keeping me on. So that even when I was writing, I, I do remember that I had a, a BlackBerry Bold Z. At the, the time. Yeah, with a very terrible battery. So you write, you write the article, and the phone dies, you have to rewrite the whole article. And you do know that I, I like writing 1,500, 2,000 words, so you have to rewrite the whole article. But I do know that... But I always knew that when I... When I wrote it and I submitted it and it came out, it was going to be worthwhile. And so before money came into the picture, I'm not saying money has come proper, proper, calm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. <laughs> but before, before I could do this for a living, 
I mean, those were the things that were keeping me. So you'd be, I do remember the first time when Obafo called me, for example. I do remember that I'd, I woke up everybody in the house to tell them that Obafo had called me. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I get to meet people that I admire, the makers of the music that I admire, and tell their stories in a way that is beautiful, in a way that honors them. Yeah. How and does that make you feel? Sometimes I like to ask this question a lot. How does that make you feel? Sometimes it makes me afraid. Why? Because these are people you've, you've admired so much. And sometimes you're so scared that you may not tell the story right. Because this person is behind a huge catalog, a catalog that is legendary. And you, you have to tell their story or you have to write about their music. That's, that, can, that can be scary. At the same time, I do know that I enjoy music, so that's where I start from. I do not, I enjoy the work I'm writing about, and so I go off of that, and I try to be as honest, as genuine, as honorable to the craft and to its maker as possible. Yeah. What, what do you think makes your writing stand out? What do you think it is that uh makes your style what it is mm. and to the point that your name is becoming a title what do you think it is i don't know maybe i'll have an answer for you in a couple of years but i do know that um i'm not trying to be somebody else for a long time i wanted to write like my idols like who tejuko james joyce um, um, Virginia Woolf, um, Chimamanda, Chinua Achebe, you know, usual suspects. Um, and a bunch of New York Times writers and Rolling Stone writers. Yeah. And of course, Malcolm Gladwell. Yes. Malcolm you wanted to write like these people. Yes, and so every time I... Do you, do you feel that your writing has elements of all those yes, um, inspirations? I'm not, I'm not too proud to admit that my writing is a reflection of everybody who has inspired me. Even my Why colleagues, are you not proud of that? I am, I'm not too proud to admit. Um, oh, it, yes, yeah. Because okay. I believe that my... I my, understand now. Because my work is homage to everybody who has inspired it's, me. It's very, yeah. And even my colleagues around, like my colleagues who are still active... Um, Oris, Gameli, Gary L. Smith, um, Fifi, Anaman, and a bunch, a bunch of other guys um, whose work teach me so much. Obed Boafu, of course. I should have mentioned Obed Boafu first, because Obed is like the guy. Yeah. So these are, uh, these are people who... I oh know that's my beard, sorry. I should include those names. Yeah, but I, you know what I mean? Like, so these are people I write with my contemporaries, my seniors, as well as those who have come and been long dead. Yeah. I don't know what sets my writing apart, but I do know that at this stage, I'm not trying to be somebody else. I'm not trying to write like Obed anymore. I'm not trying to write like Arnold anymore or Teju Cole anymore or Oris or anybody. You found your voice? Y yeah. Because... Um, and I feel like it's by reading these guys and by trying to write like them that I found my voice. Because when I write like them, I'm not being true to myself. It's just a lot of English and very little substance. Yeah, and so I, I read somewhere that you should write, you should find someone in your mind that you're comfortable with and write like you're talking to them. Who do you write to? And so when I started, I was writing to my twin brother, Gilbert, because he was the person I was most comfortable with. Um, of course, and over the years, as I've met beautiful women, and I've engaged with beautiful women, and, and been in love with beautiful women, I have written for them. And some of my best work has happened as a result of me writing, as I was writing to my girlfriend at the time, or somebody I was having, somebody in whose bosom I was having nightly comfort. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. Um, you surround yourself or you are surrounded uh, by virtue of the fact that 
you write for these people, you're surrounded by musicians and music and mm. um, you do experience and observe what the industry is about. What is your general overview of, of the art? I generally like to start, sidestep this question because I don't think that it's my place even as the observer? Yes. My place is to observe and to tell the story. Whatever happens is out of my, my remit. Um, so, so if I'm writing about a prostitute, I do not care that she's a prostitute. My job is to write about her or him as honestly as possible. I cannot involve myself or worry about the morality of it or or what can be better about it. I'm telling the story in a way that is as honest as human. I did not mean it in morality or the in, like implications of the things they do and how it affects society or them. I meant in reflection right. to your own realities. Um, again, I don't think it's my place to, to discuss. Number one, because I don't talk about people who are richer than me. And most of these musicians are richer than me. Yeah, but I, um, I feel like because it is art, it's very it's a very dicey thing to 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 give an overview of because you may be wrong in one year or two years. I feel like it's important to be present and to cherish this moment, to be as present as possible, and to be as honest to the stories as possible. Yeah, I cannot, I can't, I can't talk about what the industry should be, what it could be. That's not my place. My place is to document and curate what I see in a way that is as honest, as convincing, as human, as truthful, but when as you do, honorable as possible. When you do experience what you do experience and you tell the truth in the way that you do, don't you think <clears throat> that over time you... Uh, build a certain amount of uh, experience, wisdom, and, and knowledge mm -hmm. to be able to know what may be the reason why, for example, there's a decline mm -hmm. in a certain genre or person yeah. and what the person could have done. Why is it that you still feel that it's not your place to... Um, be an activist of, activist of sorts in that sense. Why? Because I am not an activist. I'm but a, every writer is I'm, an activist. I'm a storyteller. Every storyteller is an I'm activist. A, I'm, a, I'm a human. And, and, <clears throat> and, and, and you see, that's the thing about art. It's not something you can make definite pronouncements about, which is why I, I, I generally, because I have been wrong on a number of occasions when I've tried, even in my closet, to to say this thing about this artist, or to say that's about that artist, or to say this about this music trend, or that music trend. It is art, it is here. Whether it's going to be here for the next year or the next decade, our job, or my job, I feel, is to document, because especially in these parts, documentation about the art, it's, it's scanty. And so I'm lucky enough to document these stories and I try to make to document them in a way that is as true as possible. You don't write opinion pieces. I do opinion pieces, but they are not um, they are not so critical of an artist or their work. You know, I mean, um, I do write about my observations, but it's, in, it's it's a way that is objective. It's a way that is. Are you afraid to be controversial? What is controversy to you? I don't, I don't do controversy. So, but, so when do you know you're being controversial? I generally life? stay away from, from a lot of... Controversy? Yeah. I generally stay away. I stay clear from a lot of the chaos. Is there a reason why you Yeah, because, I, that? because I'm a storyteller. I'm not the story. You know what I mean? Of today, I noticed that globally, journalists have become the 
stars of the stories. I don't want to get to a point where I am the star of the story. I want to, I want to tell the story of the star. Because we are not the real stars. We are just privileged enough to, like I said, be the guys beside the guys who witness history on a daily basis. I don't think it's our place to be the stars. So I generally like to stay clear of a lot of the, a lot of the activity, you know, tell the story, be as truthful as you can, and then take a step back. And if you do become, inevitably, I don't think it's inevitable. Recognized as a star. It's never going to happen because, because I'm, I'm guarded enough to stay clear of saying things. And it's not, I'm not, I don't care that I'm popular anyway. Luckily for me, my name is good enough. So when I, when I go somewhere and, and, and I mention my name, it's valuable enough. So I don't have to be a star. You know, people recognize the name and recognize the work that's attached to the, to the name. I don't know, okay, I don't want to be a star. It's not my thing, so. Okay, let's talk about being guarded. You've mentioned that and staying away from... I knew from... we were going to go there. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Bring it on, Daddy. Talk to me. Is it something or some experiences that have made you that way? Um, I don't know. I think a person, is, a person is who they have become or a person is who they have experienced. And so how, I did cannot... you, how did you arrive here? by living and staying alive. I want, I yeah, I, I want you to share with us some of your experiences that have um, possibly caused... Um, because before somebody decides not to veer into certain things or do, they may have been burnt or may have seen a lot of, quote-unquote, burning being done to other people who... Oh, I have seen a lot of burning. I'm not... I'm not going to deny that I've seen a lot of burn. Have you been anybody, anybody who's lived in Ghana, anybody who's lived in the world, and especially anybody who's, who's lived in Ghana, who's grown up the way we grew up, has witnessed stuff. But I'm not complaining about them. I do know that my experiences, both good and bad, have brought me where I am. And so, yeah, I embrace like, all of it, you know. Okay. As safe as you might be, have you ever had uh, a negative reaction to a story you wrote from the subject of the story? Oh, yeah. It's not the subject. Usually it's, it's their fans. You know, over here, a lot of our artists, our pop stars, have fanatics who don't care so much about... They don't even... They are fans. They are not even... I have to choose my words very carefully now. But they are fans. That's a safe word. They are fans. And so they like you as long as you are saying something positive about the person they love. And when you say something that is critical of them, or you say something that does not flatter them enough, then you... Be Even though you're being objective and true. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's not... I'm not I, don't, I don't write politics, so I'm not so scared of... I'm not so scared for my life. You know what I mean? I don't write politics. I feel like those who do politics and those who do undercover investigative work, those are the guys who have to fear for their lives. I'm safe. And I like to stay away from all of it. So I could be in a room and you know my name, but you don't know the face. And so, I mean, until now, but so that has kept me safe for some time. And I've, I've tried to be as, like I said, stay away from all the noise so that you become as, so that you don't have to worry about a lot. Okay, I understand. And you um, experiencing all these things, it's like sometimes when you do, in you do interview artists, right? Yes, that's what I've done all my life. You get to find out a lot about them. How does that um, play out for you in your own? I, mean, I feel like it makes me appreciate their work more. Be it makes me realize that the art can come from a variety of places. So when you see an artist on a bad day, you know that all of that is going to go into a, good, a very good song. 
you know what I'm saying? So artists sacrifice their lives so we can have soundtracks to our lives. Is it a trend that you've noticed that most um, artists I wouldn't call make it the art trend. from their from dark places, from dark experiences, from those things that are um, relatable, but the average person won't find words to. Is this something you've noticed? Yeah, but I wouldn't call that a trend because the trend is fleeting. I feel like it's, it's, it's part of who they are. It's part of their fabric. Um, they have to go to the dark places so they can tell the story best. I mean, I've they have the, to? Yeah, I feel like they have to. Otherwise, because the best love stories have come from the darkest places, you know what I mean? And, and the most touching stories have come from some of, the, some of the most unflattering places. And I feel like artists are the only people who, are the only set of people who, or one of, the, the, one of a few groups of people or creatives who are willing to go and dig deep and find stuff that reflect exactly what you and I are going through even though they are not in the room with us or, or they did not wake up from the nightmare with us. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't care that an artist has to put himself through a lot of... Why not? Why don't you I care? Shouldn't say, I, I shouldn't say I, I don't care. I don't mind that they don't, they don't live like the rest of us because I know that whatever they go through, whatever they allow themselves to go through, whatever they sacrifice, is for us. Do you think the arts would be affected if artists had healthier mental um, issues or healthier minds? Um, or health? Yes, healthier mental. Is it healthier mental health? I I I, I get your question, but I um I don't know because. Some of the some of the best music has come from from artists who confess to having been in very very dark places. Some of my favorite writers, drunkards, they were drunkards their whole lives. You know what I mean? And and, and they were great writers. So I saying so if they stop going through the thing they go through, they become like the rest of us. Would you rather they become the rest of us, or would you rather them? Because they're calling. Is it, that, is that what, are you saying that art has to come from that place? I'm not saying it has to. I'm saying that most often than not, or more often than not, that's, that's where it comes from. Like, pain is where an artist's voice comes from. Where does your art come from? I don't know if I should call my work art. It is. Because all, all I am is a mirror. I'm reflecting what I see from the artist to I think you're an artist. Everybody else. I think okay, maybe everybody is an artist in there, right? Because when you meet an artist or when you listen to music, you have to create a narrative out of it. So, yeah, storytelling is an art. So I guess in that way you could call me an artist. Yeah, but I don't have to. I don't have to deal with. I don't have to go through certain bad experiences to write them. I mean, I reflect. Of course, some of these songs remind me of my own bad experiences. But at the end of the day, that's what art is supposed to do. Art is supposed to to invoke stuff in you. Yeah. I'm going to go here. What is... You don't scare me, my G. No. <laughs> you don't scare me. What is, what is your take on um, having mental health conversations? I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a positive side and there's a negative side. Do tell. Um, for one, I'm super happy that in Africa, Ghana, mental health conversations are gradually becoming part of general social conversation. So that's positive. It means that when I'm going through something, there will come a time when I won't have to worry about going to tell someone. Because I feel like over here, all we are being taught, at, all we are being taught sorry, is to toughen up and deal with it. My children, when I give birth to them, won't have to worry about being tough. They just have to worry about being human. So that's positive. I do notice, however, that there seems to be, as it's characteristic of a lot of poppy matters, um, people tend to latch onto the word as a, as a buzzword so that 
so that um, all of a sudden everybody is depressed. Uh, they have one bad day and they are depressed. And I worry that 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 trend, that depression and mental health becoming a buzzword, is going to be diluted so that so that people who are actually going through that will not be given the the seriousness that they deserve. So th I worry about that. I'm happy that mental health conversations are becoming more prominent, but I worry that it's becoming a buzzword and people just want to latch onto it. So yeah, but let's see what happens in five years. What about your mental health? What's, what's, what's a young Ghanaian writer without a bit of, a bit of paranoia and mental health issues? And how, how do you deal with that? Do you do, does this conflict um, make you doubt whether or not what you're feeling is actually true or influenced by, um, should I say, the pseudo pop culture ness mm. of, you know, these buzzwords being thrown around? Does I, that I, make you doubt? I do know, I, I don't know how I feel when it's 9 p.m. or it's 10 p.m and I can't sleep and I have to go to the beach. That is not something that is, that's not something you can, you can, that's not something you can manufacture. When you cannot, when you are trying to stay away from your pillow because that's going to invoke a lot of terrible things. So I do know, I do know how that feels. I do know that between now and July 4th, I'm going to have nightmares. Why? And I'm not, Maybe by the end of the conversation, I'm going to reveal that. But it's, it's a very serious issue, so that when I bring it up, it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's very, very serious. And so I'm very cautious about bringing it up. And you've given me a very good time right now, so I don't want to mess up. The we vibe. are not going to mess up. There's no right or wrong. Yeah, but, so, but, but, um, but let me circle back to the, to the fact that I do know when I wake up and I'm having heart palpitations, I do know when, when, I can't write because there's stuff in my mind or there are voices in my, in my head that I've not put to bed. And I have to call um, somebody to, to drive me to the beach so I can, you know. Who do you call in these times? <clears throat> Who is in your corner? I've been lucky to, to have a lot of people in my corner. Um, of course, unfortunately, I'm not able to return I'm, I'm not able to... Return the favor? The favor. It's not a favor. They're not doing me a favor because they deeply care about me. So you're not able to return the kindness? The kindness. Yes, kindness is my favorite word this week, actually. And it's funny that you bring it up. But I do notice that it's better. Like, I'm, I'm more effective from a distance. I don't know what that means for me and my future, but I... Don't, don't you think... Have, okay, I, I ask this question a lot and anybody who I have a conversation with that um, <clears throat> this comes up because I also do love having these conversations because I realize that after the conversations you realize that the person I've spoken to has offloaded a lot and they feel yeah. lighter and that for me is win enough so you, uh, you you know you've been in my corner for some time you yes. know you've called me and I've sounded so have you say have you but I feel like that's, have you, it's, it's all part of the human experience. You can't. You I can't didn't have ask it. my question. I'm sorry, Daddy. Have you have you um, sought help? I'm going to. I'm going to, but I do know that in the meantime, I've been lucky to have a, num a lot of people in my corner who who go out of their way to help me, even when it is at a great personal cost to them. And I hope that a day will come when when I can. I can show them gratitude. Gratitude. Or return kindness. Return. I don't know reciprocity. I don't know if, if it's the return if, of kindness. I don't know if gratitude is, is I have to be very careful with these words because these people are people I don't know from Adam. They 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 just see something in me and they are keen on seeing me thrive and succeed. Even if even if I'm I don't pick their cause and I'm always brushing them away and all of that, you know what I mean? These are people that, um, of course, from my, my mom, my dad, my siblings, to, I mean, to a, a, a lot of other people who are watching me right now and who are, 
who know they are the ones I'm talking about, and who shall remain unnamed. That's that's okay. Um, would you mind telling us why you said you're going to have a tough time between now and uh, fourth of July? Is this something you would I want should to not, share? I should not have mentioned the fourth of July, but you you know you know like I know, but they don't. But but um, I mean, as a person grows, they they face trials and tribulations, and, and unfortunately. For me, 4th of July means something very significant for me. Um, so, so yeah, I'm not running away from it. Um, I'm, you are? I'm not. And Otherwise, okay. I wouldn't be talking to you. But you know how long we've wanted us to have this conversation yeah. on camera. Yeah, but yeah. For whatever you said now, everybody is wondering why his demeanor changed. You know, um, so, here, so here's what it is. He um, tried to dance around it. Um, here's what it is. Um, I don't think that anybody is comfortable with the idea of loss or even the, the tendency of loss. And so when you come so close to losing something or somebody that is so close to you, um, that changes your life forever. Um, everybody has gone through it or everybody is going to go through it at some point. But like I said, it is what it is. It is what the human... Condition is. Condition is. And, and I'm not running away from it. I know what it is, you know, and I'm, and I'm coping. And I promise you that I'm going to get help. Now, everybody knows. That you put it out here that you're going to get help. Because we are, <clears throat> I mean, this can't be the end or the only conversation you do have. So yeah, Of course, I'm going to return for a more, a more triumphant conversation. Um, but it's not all bad, Kwame. Um, I want to emphasize I noticed that when people start talking about these topics, it tends to become very dark. But for me, overall, I've had a very, very good time on this earth. I've been privileged to do what I love and be recognized for it. I've been privileged to be loved by amazing, amazing people, starting from my parents, all the people I've, I've, I've met along the journey. And sometimes I wonder how, how that even happens. That makes me so happy. And it makes me recognize that um, angels are watching over me, you know what I mean? So um, it's not all bad. Like, I've, I've had a very good time, you know what I mean? So I've had a very, very good time. It's not a sad story over here. If you know where we come from, it, it, it's, been, it's been a very good, it's been a very good run. Yeah. I know where you come from, so. I was going to ask a question in relation to some of the things you have mentioned in our conversation. <clears throat> also for the mental health conversation versus religion. Well, I don't know mm -hmm. what you feel about that. Angels are watching over me, all those things. So how do you, how, do you, um, how, how does it play in your mind with your belief versus your physical mental health? I mean, I don't go to church as much anymore. Um, I don't have a very good excuse for that. I do have a very good excuse for that because I know that a lot of my best writing happens on Sunday mornings. And so... That's yeah, just a ritual. Yeah, a lot of, my, a lot of my, 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 my best writing happens on Sunday morning. And so, you know... Um, but of course, I do remember as a, as a, as a five-year-old, as a four-year-old, that my mom took us to church. And I do know that a lot of the people, a lot of my experiences have happened in church. And so I don't know whether I like it or not, consciously or unconsciously, these things, or the things I pick up from teacher Hannah in the 10 and 11 year, the, the 9 and 10 class, or my colleagues, Benjamin and Andrew, you know, whom I was, whom I, I, I met in church at 10 years old, I do know all these guys have influenced me and they are part of my journey and they have because you know when you grow up with someone like they help you to watch yourself and they, they become a reflection exactly as well. and, and, and they help you mold your life um, so when 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 it's going bad you're like no it's not it's not all bad and when it's going good you're like yeah it could be better as well yeah it could be better because You've seen Benjamin do it. You've seen Gilbert do it. You know what I mean? So it means that you, like, it, it's easier to spare you on. 
Yeah, so these are like, I don't know, angels. In your definition? Yeah, because I've been privileged to have a lot of angels. A lot of angels. Okay. Um, I know we're going to have another conversation. Yeah, now. Yeah. More victorious conversation. <laughs> I think this one in itself is a victory, in my opinion, yeah. that you actually opened up and yeah. spoke. You know how long it's taken. Yeah. So we shall have another conversation, yeah. especially updates on you getting help and how it's going versus how it's currently influencing your work, my work. your life, yeah. and everything in between. I'd love to know that. Yeah. I would love to know that too. Yeah. So, so when I find out, you're going to find out. Exactly. Yeah. So in the meantime, we're going to end it here and uh, catch you again. Yeah. Thank you very much. My pleasure.